Okay, so we are now in the movement evaluation. Like I just said at the tail end of that last video, I'm not surprised that it's as many steps as it is because we're doing a lot of arch development. We're widening out this upper arch, we're widening up the lower, and moving those posterior teeth takes a little while. So we just need to go through and we need to do a movement evaluation and see how we're getting from A to Z. How are these teeth moving? So one of the things this software does is it, the default is to have least movement last, which means that whatever tooth moves the least, it's going to wait to do that till the very end. We also change that to least movement first. So everything starts moving right away, which can sometimes help certain things or hurt other things. Let's take a look back at what it looked like when we had least movement first, and you'll see the biggest issue that's that's uh, created is the contact between this central incisor and this lateral incisor. As that lateral turns in, that central hasn't gotten out of the way, so it creates a very heavy contact before it moves out of the way. So that's the biggest area that is that is concerning to me. This one right here is concerning, but nowhere near as concerning as this one. So if I instead go to this one, where it does the least movement first, it helps improve that quite a bit. Doesn't fix it, as you'll see there's some heavy contact there, but it's still far better. So you kind of pick which one you want. Uh, and in this case, I actually like this one more because I'll tell you how to fix that. So everything looks pretty good within the, the same confines. We're look we're looking for is to make sure that the numbers don't exceed these numbers by much. I don't care if they exceed them by 0 0.05 or even 0 0.1 because plastic's flexible. I'm not too worried about that, but I don't want it to be much bigger. This 0.3, it's a little iffy, but there's less than that over here. So this tooth can nudge that way a little bit. You know, so all in all, I'm okay with those posterior teeth. It's just those two front contacts that really has me thinking, hmm, maybe we could do this a little better. So the first thing I can do is I can say, well, it, this tooth worked a lot better when it started moving right away. But right now, its start step listed right here is step 19. Well, why don't we just tell it to start moving at step one? That would be, that would make things pretty nice. So I'm gonna refresh steps. And now let's see what happens. It starts moving right away. And it really helps with this. Now, the worst it gets is 0.35. And I can fix that as well by as soon as that 0.35 comes into play, I can move this tooth a little bit the other direction. try to split the difference. Okay, I'm gonna click refresh steps. And now let's see how that improves things. So it gets to here. And then it hovers right in that area, which I think is going to be fine clinically. Okay, so I've just resequenced the movement a little bit there. And that 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 makes me happy. I think that's gonna work. We do have a heavy contact in here. But let's figure these things out sort of one at a time. So we've got a heavy contact here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this tooth distally. Try to cr open up that space a little bit. All right, click refresh steps. And so now that lateral to central contact gets a little heavy right there. Once again, I'm gonna tweak this back a little bit, have it favor that distal, distal collision a little. If you're trouble, if you're having trouble doing these minor adjustments, just keep your mouse button clicked down and bring your your mouse farther away from the tooth. That will make it much easier to fine tune things. Refresh steps, and now let's see how that looks. Pretty good to me. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to address this contact right here by tipping this tooth back just a little bit where it's overly heavy. Try to find it where it's acceptable on either side. Refresh steps. And I tell you what, the reason it's doing that actually is because it's not moving yet. And that's my, that's kind of silly on my end. I should have thought to move that tooth from the beginning.
That would have been much easier. I should have just fixed that to begin with. Sorry about that. All right. So I didn't practice this case. Now you get to see truly how I evaluated things. What I should have done at the very beginning, and I realized that I had done it on tooth number nine, but tooth number eight, I didn't start moving at the beginning. Should have done that. So this is clearly the, 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 soft, the portion of the software you're likely to spend the most amount of time. I like to have my assistants move everything up to the point where I'm going to align the case and then I'll do the alignment and I'll do this phase um, because I want to be in control of them, honestly. So now let's take a look at the lower arch. I'm okay with 0.1, possibly even 0.15 between molars, but anything above 0.1 and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I could do things a little differently. So let's figure out how could we move this. I can just cheat, tip it forward just a little bit till it has some contact with the tooth in front of it. Hit refresh steps. And that's fine. Again, I don't care about any of these point ones. But how do I address these 0.15s? Do I move the teeth or do I delay a tooth or what do I want to do? I think this tooth, I'm going to see about what happens if I tell it, instead of starting at step 13, at the very end, what if I just tell it to step, move a couple steps earlier? Just a couple. Well, that relieved that contact. Uh, maybe a little too early. Let's just try it one step earlier. One step before it did initially. That solved that. This, I'm, I'm working outside in. So now this one, let's see where does that one contact prematurely and why does it? So I guess I'm going to tell this tooth to, to move. Let's just try two more steps early, refresh steps. And uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, that was too early. Because it's bumping into that canine when I do that. Let's move it a little bit. Let's say, no, we don't like that. That heavy contact. I don't mind 0.1 on either side, but I don't want to be 0.25 on one side. And let's see. Yeah, that's pretty decent. I just don't think the plastic, uh, pl I believe the plastic of the trays is usually gonna, going to accommodate that. I'm just telling you honestly, this is what I'm going to do in this case. I'm going to leave it here. Um, these last couple trays are going to be fighting to get these last little fine-tuned movements. And if I have to take a little IPR strip just to soften the contacts, that's one thing. But that's enough tinkering with that. So that is the end, you know, of sequence movement evaluation or sequencing of movement, okay? Um, yeah, so that, that's the end of the work that I need to do, and I'll explain why in the next phase. So now we are done with we, with the alignment and movement sequencing. The next step is where we're going to add the buttons. So what I do need to do is if you think you're going to use attachments, buttons, whatever or not, you need to check this box. If not, well, then you can leave it undone, and you can continue right to the export where you can export the models and be done. But if I'm going to add buttons, I'm going to click this, and I'm going to click this button. 